pyramid chambers of the 21st century, the lost knowledge of the angels. Bill Brown had no particular interest in Egypt or pyramids for the longest time. Then one night back in 1997, all of that changed. Images of the pyramids, even films of Bill designing the Fourth Dynasty Second Pyramid for the Giza Pharaoh suddenly played in his mind. Whether it was a dream, a vision, or perhaps a glimpse of a lifelong past, one thing is for certain. Bill suddenly gained an inner knowing of Egypt, the pyramids, and Giza in particular. Since then, Bill has made more than 52 trips to Giza, many of them with his Polish wife and partner Lucina Lobos-Brown, a gifted intuitive and skilled massage therapist and healer. Together they've been able to identify antiquities, tombs, and make geometric correlations that are helping to rewrite Egypt's true history, much of which has not been revealed to the public. Because Bill's work has been picked up by National Geographic and Polish television, thousands, perhaps even millions, have now heard their story about the ancient ones. Even Dr. Zahi Hawass, the former head of Egypt's Supreme Council of Antiquities, had enough confidence in their findings that for one of Bill's projects connected with the Fayyam Hawara pyramid restoration back in 2007, Hawass broke with tradition and ordered a front-end loader, rather than hand-carried buckets, be used to unearth hundreds of priceless artifacts. This was the first time he had ever done that, because he trusted the accuracy of the evidence Bill's team had brought him. In their effort to share and spread this knowledge, Bill and Lucina have made more than 50 presentations on three continents since 2006. Bill's career as a successful civil engineer in the Washington, D.C. area turned out to be the perfect foundation for his current work. His familiarity with geometry, architectural structures, and computer-aided design programs, CAD, combined with his growing insights on Egypt, enabled him to do everything from triangulating buried tombs and hidden chambers to uncovering some of Egypt's greatest secrets. One of those secrets involved the precise placement and positioning of the pyramids, both on the Earth's surface relative to our celestial neighbors and within the Earth's magnetic field. As Bill began to work on his 21st century pyramid chambers, he realized he would need to factor these in for any current day designs to be effective. New calculations were needed for the positioning of the pyramids in relation to the heavens and the Earth's slowly moving magnetic field had shifted over the eons. It was around 2003, between trips to Egypt, that Bill began building human-scaled pyramids and geometric structures. By continually testing their energetic properties, he was able to gain an understanding about how different geometries affected our health something that was known and used by the Egyptian temple priests. Since then, he has focused his attention on recreating the original pyramid designs and updating them in order to serve humanity in the 21st century. The latest modern-day breakthrough, the merger of the icosahedron and the double pyramid, really an octahedron, reveals new energetic secrets. As Bill began to use more sophisticated science, such as GDV cameras and biogeometry, his measurements as to the effects these designs had on objects and people became more accurate. He looked at things such as changes in physical properties, energy patterns, coherence, and for humans, a number of health and vitality factors as well. His latest iteration of pyramid chamber technology, what Bill calls the ICASA-8, bring several prime geometric designs together within a pyramid structure to engineer a space that can balance energies and return things to center, to homeostasis. It appears that the importance of geometry, something known and taught by the ancients, is coming into vogue once again. Not only in the revival of sacred geometry, but in academic circles as well. In 2013, Andrew Hodges, a mathematical physicist at Oxford University, wrote, The revelation that particle interactions, 
the most basic events in nature may be consequences of geometry, advances a decades-long effort to reformulate quantum field theory, the body of laws describing elementary particles and their interactions. In a kind of coming full circle, Hodge's statement echoes those taught in many classical mystical traditions, that each of the various planes of nature which make up the whole of reality, including the physical, vital, emotional, mental, and spiritual planes, have their own unique geometries. This was also at the foundation of the Egyptian temple sciences, and they incorporated this knowledge into their everyday lives in quite practical ways. Of course, there is no more visible testament to geometry than the Egyptian pyramids. This diagram, which identifies the various geometries associated with the planes, comes from the science of biogeometry, developed by the renowned Egyptian architect and scientist Dr. Ibrahim Karim. It presents another and quite profound way to look at our world. The ancient Egyptians' version of science was a more complete holistic science than the science we know today. Theirs included both our quantitative component, which was electromagnetic based and covered a purview limited by the speed of light, that's the physical plane, and it also included a complementary qualitative component that took into account the other dimensions or planes of nature beyond the physical and whose vibrations were faster than the speed of light. Somehow though, this qualitative component of their rich body of science, a component which could give every person the capacity to literally see and work with the invisible energy forces around them, mysteriously vanished. And only the quantitative half of science remained, which is what we work with today. The quantitative and qualitative were, and continue to be, like two sides of the same coin. Together, they constitute a whole that equates mathematically and intuitively. This technical diagram from a biogeometry course illustrates this quantity-quality relationship. Quantity we know is expressed by the number of cycles per second. Quality though is determined by the relationship of the amplitude or wave height to the wavelength, which creates an angle. Here is another diagram illustrating how the ancient Egyptians viewed our reality. The cross, of course, represents our physical world. The vertical line represents the electric and the horizontal line the magnetic. In between these are all of the other planes of nature, planes we can access using geometry to go into resonance with them. Again, this is from the biogeometry teachings. This model used by the ancient Egyptians gave them a much broader understanding of the world around them than today's quantitative science can. Interestingly, the Egyptians' brand of science seems to have some commonalities with quantum physics and string theory in particular. Finally, here is a rough diagram Dr. Karim sketched out showing how the ancient Egyptians viewed reality. They had specific tools for working with the quantitative energies and formulas, our slower than light speed physical world, and specific tools for working with qualitative, faster than light qualities. You can see that the physical world our senses perceive is but a small sliver of the totality of what's out there. Today, of course, the speed of light is no longer seen as an absolute limit. Rather, it's the upper boundary defining the limits of this physical reality, just as this drawing suggests. Quantum physics has shown us that quarks, leptons, neutrinos, and even our own thoughts travel faster than the speed of light, and photons can be in two places at once, something known as a non-local effect. It is outside of space-time. This awed Einstein, who called it spooky action at a distance. The bottom line, though, is that the Egyptians' holistic body of science enabled them to live in harmony with the world around them for thousands of years. Yet in less than 300, our unbalanced science has nearly led to our demise. 
Perhaps it would be wise of us to pick up where the ancient Egyptians left off so we can turn things around and start to restore the balance. Getting back to the primacy of geometry, one just needs to look at any chemistry textbook to see the importance geometry plays in our world. Linus Pauling's definitive 1947 textbook, General Chemistry, could, to a large extent, just as easily have been formatted as a textbook on applied geometry, because it shows how molecular angles and geometric patterns define chemical properties. Or, as biogeometry teaches, energy plus shape equals function. Today's university-level molecular geometry courses bear that out. Teaching the three-dimensional geometrical arrangement of molecules is a big deal. A substance's reactivity, polarity, phase of matter, color, magnetism, and biological activity are all determined by its geometry. This amazing lost Tesla drawing was found in early 2016 in Arizona. It's a geometric math spiral or multiplication map that contains all of the numbers in a simple-to-use system. Some of the pieces are already familiar to us, but some are not. One mathematician wrote, The spiral not only explores multiplication as an interwoven web, but it offers a visual understanding of how all numbers are self-organized into 12 positions of compositability. Also note that the diagram is dated 12-12-12, but that would be 1912. The secrets of the Egyptian temple sciences later morphed into the science known as universal harmonics, again a science which presented an even more comprehensive understanding of our reality than we have today. Yet, because it was associated with the workings of nature and thus paganism, the Roman Catholic Church worked hard to suppress it, even banning the triton interval of a half octave from sacred music in 1234 AD. The church seemed well aware that the triton could reveal the symmetry in music harmony and open the door to the, quote, carnal knowledge, unquote, of harmonics in the body and elsewhere in nature. And so universal harmonics vanished. More recently, in the mid-20th century, a group of French scientists made an effort to reconstruct the vibrational harmonics of the original Egyptian body of science, ultimately petitioning the scientific establishment to extend the known vibrational energy spectrum. Still, their petition was denied. Yet, in the process of reconstructing the Egyptian science and beginning a resurgence of inquiry, they studied the effects created by various geometric shapes, including the hemisphere, which, as you can see from this diagram, is mathematically equivalent, for all practical purposes, to the pyramid. They also discovered a powerful invisible energy quality that seemed to be more dangerous and penetrating than X-rays. They believed it was related to cosmic rays. Vibrating faster than the speed of light, they called this energy quality negative green. On a 2D compass or representation, it's at the bottom, directly opposite green, which is why the French called it negative green, even though it has nothing to do with the color. What's relevant to everyone interested in pyramids is that these French scientists, most notably Dr. Leon Chamaret, discovered that upside-down hemispheres and pyramids again, equivalent in terms of their properties, attracted the harmful vertical component of the negative green energy quality. They also discovered that this could be eliminated by making minor adjustments to the geometry. That's why the sides of the Egyptian pyramids have a slight half-degree indentation, and why domes capping virtually all of the world's mosques and churches use adornments to eliminate it, such as spires or crosses on the top. If not for these corrections, vertical negative green would sicken the congregants inside. Here you can see that correction in the Great Pyramid design, and that every dome in this mosque has a geometric correction on top. Most lay people, and even architects today, are unaware of this because the information has been lost or hidden. Up until perhaps the early 1800s, though, it used to be fairly common knowledge. It's important to note that vertical negative green, like EMFs, 
is cumulative and can do more than just sicken. Looking no more menacing than the blocks children play with, the stack of inverted wooden hemispheres in front of Dr. Chamaray's desk ultimately killed him. These stacked hemispheres generated enough vertical negative green to dehydrate and start to mummify him. He died at his desk. It's unfortunate that he wasn't aware that the Egyptians used vertical negative green in their mummification process. For this reason, it's critical to eliminate any vertical negative green from any modern pyramids so they only produce beneficial effects. Why is it important that we bring these heretofore hidden science teachings forward? Because by understanding how these geometries and planes of nature function, Everyone can learn to detect, measure, and transmute through resonance the natural, invisible forces around them, and we can improve every technology that exists today. Dr. Kareem explains it this way. This spiritual or sacred energy is a sort of transcendental energy or agent that affects space-time. It belongs to no religion, no belief, no creed, yet is at the core of every belief on earth. With the proper tools and understandings, we can work with this spiritual energy in practical ways to live in harmony with our world and the universe around us. Biogeometry bridges science and spirituality. It is an enhancement to modern technology. In experiments with biogeometry performed at Cairo's National Research Center, Scientists demonstrated that geometric forms could affect life functions. This biogeometry cube, for example, kept mice in radioactive cages healthy, while those in radioactive cages without the cube developed tumors and cancer. Dr. Kareem also identified a powerful energy quality that was akin to a centering or balancing force. It balanced the toxic environments those mice were in to keep them healthy. This beneficial energy consisted of three vibrational qualities, the higher harmonic of gold, the higher harmonic of ultraviolet, and horizontal, not vertical, negative green. Horizontal negative green, the horizontal referring to the magnetic as opposed to the electric, is more like a spiritual carrier wave. This triad of energies which Dr. Kareem named the BG3, which is short for the Biogeometry 3, can be found in every one of our cells, our chakras. It emanates from the world's sacred sites, and it seems to bring whatever it touches into balance. BG3 also emanates from the center of every physical object in our physical space. Is this how the unified field or source God energy comes through into our physical world? It's anybody's guess, but it does seem to make sense. The key point is that this BG3 quality promotes growth, vitality, and well-being. Bill used biogeometry to help guide his work on the ICASA 8 to make sure it generated a strong BG3 energy quality. Today, thanks to biogeometry and increasingly sophisticated testing equipment that can measure subtle energies, a new scientific paradigm is emerging, and with it, a renewed interest in geometry and the Great Pyramids. There was also a keen interest in the pyramids back in the late 1950s, and it ran through to the mid-1970s. With it came an explosion of research on pyramid geometry. Generally speaking, Researchers concurred that the energy within pyramids seemed to affect living systems, from plants to humans. What was this energy? What was causing it? What angles worked best? These are questions that are still being examined, yet quite a bit of progress has been made. Most of the researchers believe that pyramids focused cosmic energy, especially tachyons, to support life and bring systems into balance. NASA was so impressed with the pyramid's ability to attract and focus cosmic rays that they designed and were issued a patent for a cosmic ray collector consisting of a series of pyramids. Even the U.S. Department of Agriculture experimented with pyramids, reporting in their farm bulletin in the 1950s that 30-inch pyramids placed in pastures reduced flies and other flying pests of livestock by 70%. 
An abbreviated list of pyramid study findings includes Aluminum foil saturated with pyramid energy would keep food preserved for extended periods of time without the need for refrigeration. Contaminated milk within a pyramid showed a drop of as much as 16% of the harmful bacteria, while control samples placed outside the pyramid continued to develop additional bacteria. The same was found true of standard bacteria-containing water samples. Abnormalities in human blood specimens were brought into the normal range when inside of a pyramid. Fruits ripened faster, yet remained edible longer for up to a month when kept inside of a pyramid. Healing appeared to progress faster and with fewer complications when the person was exposed to pyramid space. Meditation was reportedly more effective when conducted inside a pyramid. Skin temperature, as measured by galvanic skin response, was increased at the body's extremities while the subject was inside a pyramid. Objects inside of pyramids lost a small percentage of their mass. A 10-pound block of iron and a 10-pound bag of sugar, for example, lost 61 and 50 grams of weight, respectively, after being stored in a pyramid for three weeks. And finally, yes, the edges of steel razor blades were really restored when placed inside a pyramid overnight. Study Findings The aforementioned effects were observed in pyramids built from a variety of materials, suggesting it was the shape of the pyramid rather than what it was made from that was the key. Metals, though, did not work as well as non-metallic organic surfaces. The energy on the west side seems strongest and best for growing. Whether some or all of the test pyramids were corrected for vertical negative green is not known. So what is responsible for these effects? Cosmic rays? Tachyons? BG3? All three? While the jury is still out, Brown believes the BG3 energy quality plays a big role. Now that it's been rediscovered that geometry angles shape the energy's function. It follows that certain angles perform certain kinds of work. They do good things for us, like creating BG3. Coincidentally, there's another word in the English language with the exact same letters as angle, but with a minor transposition in their arrangement. Angel. In fact, in Old English, angle was originally spelled A-N-G-E-L, angel though they attributed, of course, two different meanings to each. Two words, two meanings. Or is it possible we're really looking at the same basic concept, but just from two very different perspectives? A Western European perspective and an ancient Egyptian perspective. The great mystical traditions, including Judaism, Islam, Christianity, and Taoism, ascribe many names to God. The Jewish Kabbalah says God has 72 names. The Sufis say Allah has 99 names, and so on. Yet, as the initiates soon learn, these aren't names of God so much as they are attributes of God, or whatever term you prefer to use. This Arabic depiction of the names shows geometry at its finest. The ancient Egyptians, according to some sources, worshipped 114 gods, which they called netters a word equivalent to our word nature. And don't many connect God with nature? Yet all of these mystical names are really about identifying attributes of all that is. They divide the world into the main qualities of creation. Moreover, these names were and are words of power. When properly voiced as the initiates and holy men were trained, the resulting vibrational sound qualities were said to be able to move mountains, part the seas, and even levitate giant blocks of stone. Sound, vibrating compression waves, is considered by many the primary energy. Even many of the holy books tell us, first there was the word. And while we associate sound with hearing, also considered our primary sense, it is but one of five qualities of scale, along with sight, smell, touch, and taste, that we can work with. Bringing this full circle, sacred or high-minded geometric structures such as the Icasa 8 are designed to balance their occupants and harmonize them with their natural environment. 
This is akin to putting people into a kind of transcendental pathway, one that reaches through to the other side where our higher selves and our helper angels reside. Getting back to Bill's Icasa 8, it will eventually use multiple qualities of scale, including light, color, and sound, for maximum balancing effect. A look at this graphic reveals not all pyramids are the same. From Dr. Kareem's work, though, we've learned that different angles have different properties. A 66-degree angle, for example, is excellent for neutralizing electromagnetic radiation while a 90-degree angle is better for neutralizing certain geopathic vibrations. While there are still many unknowns, the ICASA-8, with its proprietary double pyramid angles, optimizes the highest balancing and centering forces. It has been suggested that the regular icosahedron, not being found in nature, is the first example of a geometrical object that is the free creation of human thought. The earliest mention of the icosahedron seems to come from Euclid. A commentary in his writings speaks of the five so-called Platonic figures. However, Euclid says they do not belong to Plato. Rather, three of the five, the cube, the pyramid, and the dodecahedron, come from Pythagoreans. And the octahedron and the icosahedron were identified by Theatetus. After 25 years of study and research, Bill discovered that the icosahedron shape produced a strong balancing effect, more so than the other platonic solids. Experimenting with various designs and models, Bill created what he calls the next generation of the icosahedron, incorporating dodecahedron geometries inside of the new 21st century double apex pyramid gateway. Biogeometry testing was used to assess the ability of different structures to generate BG3. The best performers Bill ultimately compared included a 52-degree pyramid, an icosahedron, and the double pyramid icosa-8. The tests showed the icosa-8 to be the only structure capable of generating a strong BG3 quality fully across all the planes of nature. In short, the ICASA-8 design is perfectly suited to bring people and any living systems into balance, thereby helping to establish homeostasis, equilibrium, and better health and performance. Upgrading Ancient Pyramids into 21st Century Buildings The ICASA-8 Pyramid Gateway, now available for sale, creates the ideal space for supporting healing, meditation, the arts, or whatever use you can imagine. Here is a sample layout a practitioner might use. This option allows for two large icosahedron chambers. The computer table area contains a stress monitoring station, complete with an advanced BioWell GVD device. The room curtain can be closed to give privacy and also allows the adjacent room section to have a large icosahedron for massage and other therapies. Lastly, a somewhat similar commercial project Bill Brown has been working on is the pavilion. The 75,000 square foot pavilion incorporates some of the same geometries. It's an immersive, futuristic, healthy living multiplex that delivers the best that science, integrative medicine, and the humanities have to offer to enable people to live happier, healthier, and more expansive lives. The first pavilion is expected to be opened in the Washington, D.C. area in 2020. For more information, please visit thepaviliancenter.com. Must there always be trade-offs in terms of health for our modern technologies? Absolutely not. 
Pythagoras learned about science's qualitative component in Egypt and brought it back to Greece to teach. Yet, as the records show, he was only allowed to teach the quantitative portion of science. Coming full circle and bringing this ancient knowledge back to benefit mankind is something Bill Brown feels driven to do through his projects, lectures, and his sharing of the science of biogeometry. May the pyramid force be with you.